Hello friends, my name is Pranav Shukla and I welcome you to my online tutorial. Today we are going for NCRT Standard 9 English. And our today's concern is poetry number 3, that is Rain on the Roof. Uh, friends, uh, wait a minute please. Okay. A very delicate poetry is Rain on the Roof, a very light-hearted subject, poet here is seen being very autobiographical, he is sharing his personal feelings, experiences and is connecting with the readers emotionally, sentimentally. Again the poetry takes anyone into the vista of the memories. Anyone can be related with the poetry, Any, anyone can relate themselves with the poetry because the subject deals with something that happens almost in everyone's life. So it's a very touching, very emotional subject uh, away from the typical rain description poetry. It also demands a sheer observation, some surrounding knowledge and uh, on and all, it's a very beautiful poetry. So, having read the poetry, we can just make out that the poetry is telling us about the memories one can have regarding the rain. Here in the poetry, the sound of raindrops falling on the shingly roof. Chapraukar, Kanadiaukar, Parsat Parto, Enajay. So that works like a music, is a sound of music, or can say the music of sounds, of drizzle of the rain. And that sound is quite known, quite familiar, and one has, has lived a lot of memorable moments amidst the rain surrounding. So this rain brings back the sweet memories of the past, especially here the memories of poet's mother who might be away from him or might be no more. So it takes the poet into the vista of the years in his childhood when he was too little and uh, he remembers his mother's face, uh, mother who used to make him sleep along with his siblings when the rain was outside on the shingly roof and uh, mother's lullaby and that raindrops music along used to give him a very rhythmic musical effect that was quite soothing and lovable for the poet. So he sure gets back into the vista of the years. So it's a very delicate poetry. Let's read it line to line. You can see some photographs over there. The first photograph is of starry sky along with some clouds. Rain clouds are there which are dark. And in the picture bottom, there is a cottage with uh, uh, teen roof shingles sometimes might be there as the roof of the cottage. And once the raindrops fall upon that, it creates a lot of noise, but the persistent noise creates the musical effect. So. Now let's read the poetry. When the humid shadows hover, here the humid shadows means the dark clouds which are full of water. So as, as clouds create, leave shadow upon the earth, in the shadows, shadows of the water filled clouds, they are called as humid. So these humid shadows, one of the quality and the gesture of cloud is put over there so it's a change of name is a use of metonymy figure of speech when the humid shadows hover hovering means staying in the air in the sky for a long time and moving around the place not shifting from one to other place so when the humid shadows hover means when the dark clouds are there in the sky 
and the sky is full of clouds which are full of moisture moisture laden clouds are there which are about to bring the rain and these clouds when hover around in the sky especially over the starry spheres starry spheres again refers to the sky at night time which is full of stars so these two lines if we go for simplification when the starry sky in of the sky full of stars night sky full of stars filled with watery clouds which are about to give the rain in this situation in this situation what happens and the melancholy darkness gently whips in rainy tears melancholy means sad what a bliss to press the pillow what a bliss one word is there bliss here bliss means happiness what a bliss to press the pillow mala what happiness we get to press the pillow under the head where to press and where to lie with the pillow okay what a bliss to press the pillow of a cottage chamber bed mala there is a bed of cottage chamber mala you must have seen uh, the bed with four poles on the corners tied with some mosquito nets or some coverings over there these are called as cottage chamber bed so on this cottage chamber bed pressing the pillow below the beneath the the head one is lying there and listening to the patter that persistent sound of rain drops is called as patter is a natural sound word it's a use of figure of speech onomatopoeia so lie listening to the patter of the soft rain overhead so here the poet says that <clears throat> uh at this time in the night time full of cloud huge clouds which are full of moisture move around in the sky and the sad darkness darkness is always sad because it is dark it is waiting to be wiped out so it is given a human quality of being sad melancholy use of personification so sad darkness of night is wiped off with the rain drops which seem like tears falling from the sky as the night sky is shedding tears whipping and these tears are compared with or the rainy drops are compared with what tears and that give the imagery of night sky is whipping is looking sad so this poet is comparing raindrops to tears and he says that the dark sky which seems to be very sad it appears as if it is crying and the raindrops the tears shed by it he adds that it is a blessing it is a happiness to lie on the bed in this room that is cottage chamber that means that cottage bedroom and listen to the sound made by raindrops falling on the roof so is a nice imagery beautiful picture created by the poet over there so let's go further every tinkle on the shingles as you can see here uh i have put over there the picture of shingles shingly roof shingles means nadiya apni language ma so every tinkle tinkle means that gentle light ringing sound of rain droplets every tinkle on the shingles has an echo in the heart echo means here repeated sound of something here the echo means recalling the past memories and that sound takes your heart to the past memories has an echo in the heart and a thousand dreamy fancies thousand dreamy fancies uh, mind well here the dreamy fancies refers to the various imagery or imaginary thoughts and fantasies that are aroused in poet's mind so thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start so they start one well, of this dreamy fancies start and they keep the poet 
poet's heart busy in thinking and recalling the past and along with this dreamy fancies a thousand recollections recollections here friends again one of the past memories a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof uh first of all i would like to show you the picture of woof here the way the the threads are uh, horizontally vertically interwoven so they create this kind of thread woof when the rain drops fall they also look like this woof so they are called as as the rain drops fall through the air so they are called as air threads that means rain droplets and as this in this woof these threads are actually interwoven and make one whole cloth in the same way these rain drops are just compared with number of recollections and memories of the past they are interwoven into one another and they create the whole picture of the past so this woof of threads making a cloth this woof of air threads means rain droplets bringing back the memories of the past all the past recollections so this is the direct indirect comparison the use of metaphor over there so the again i'm reading this lines every tinkle on the shingles has an echo in the heart and a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start and a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof so the whole meaning is the numerous memories intermingle to form a beautiful picture that the poet recollects and when this happens this happens when as i listen to the patter of the rain upon the roof so this rain drops upon the singly roof brings him some recollections of the past and sends him to the dreamy fancies in thousands so it's a beautiful imagery again used over there by the poet i hope you understood this yeah you have the rain drops falling on the singly roof in the night time and this is a singly roof as your reference now now suddenly this recollection of the memory comes strongly in his mind and creates the picture of the strongest ever memory that he recalls from the past and that is the memory with his mother the time that he has spent lovably so now let's read the lines first now in memory comes my mother mother comes in which form the way she comes she used to come in the memory she used to be in the memory in years ago to regard the darling dream as mother comes just to regard just to recall just to give a visit just to remember the darling dreamers dreamers is poet himself and his siblings ere she left them till the dawn ere is the poetic preposition for before dawn means daybreak oh i feel her fond look on me fond means lovable very much likable liking as i list to this refrain refrain means repeated uh rain drops the song that is sung by the poet poet's mother something that happens again and again in the song in the poem that is called as refrain here the different sound of the rain that is quite repeated persistently that is called as refrain which is played upon the shingles means by the patter of the rain so 
here the poet says that now introduces his mother he says that is is dreaming of his mother as he had told in the previous stanza that rain brings memories of past it is the memory of his mother who is no longer alive in the past she used to love him a lot she used to consider him as darling and she would let him sleep till day break this line uh, air she left them till the dawn matlab she used to put the effort to make poet as well as as well as his siblings which are darling dreamers darling dreamers is siblings in the childhood when they were lovingly put to sleep by the mother so they were all being put to sleep sometimes even till dawn till the early morning so and they had the sweet dreams so poor still can feel that his mother is looking at him as he listen to the song made by the rain drops that song may be compared with lullaby that is sung by the mother while making the child sleep so song made by the rain drops falling on the shingly roof the sound of rain makes him correlate with his past and his present that is why the poet is moved by the sound of rain drops on the shingles of his room whenever he hears this sound it brings back the memories of past and is reminded is of reminded of his mother so this rain drops ultimately leaves the poet go very much sentimental and uh, he recalls his mother in the lovable time that is that has been spent with his mother and is missing his mother so much so would be his siblings so uh, i'm i'm damn sure that this poetry has reminded you of all your past time with which you spent with your siblings and your mother under the rain you must have enjoyed the rain in various ways this is one of the ways enjoyed by the poet lying under the roof on the chamber bed pressing the pillow and going into the vista of the years so is a very delicate poetry come to an end let's go for the figure of speech the poetic devices they are called as literary devices or the figures of speech if you just go for the rhyme scheme of the poetry it is a b c b d e f e uh rhyming scheme means the the all the verses ending with the sound would be given a letter or the number and what pattern that comes out would be called as rhyme scheme so you just test it by yourself now the stanza one figures of speech is a repetition of consonant sound in two or more consecutive words like humid hover starry spheres press pillow like listening so all this eh, ha sa pa la these sounds are repeated so this is the use of alliteration then we have the natural sound word we have the words to create the dramatic effect and auditory imagery so that word is called as onomatopoeia that is to patter then treating a non living thing as a living being that is the use of personification your darkness is looking sad melancholy so is use of personification then comes transport epithet the use of an adjective with a noun it refers to another noun so if the noun is transferred from original sorry adjective is transferred from original noun to very closely associated noun there is a use of change of adjective from one noun to the other noun adjective is epithet in poetic language so transfer of epithet is called as transferred epithet here the melancholy adjective it transferred from the poet himself to darkness so it is transferred epithet stanza 2 again we have alliteration busy being there thread rain roof alliteration onomatopoeia again patter tinkle these are natural sound words personification again uh recollection is personified 
where they weave the dreams or air threads. So it's a human quality given to recollection, use of personification. Again, dreamy is the poet, not the fence is the adjective is transferred from one noun to the other noun is the use of transferred epithet. Again, memory, my mother, darling, dreamer is the use of alliteration. Again, the word pattern is repeated is the use of onomatopoeia. So we have some common striking figures of speech available in the poetry. I hope you understood and enjoyed it. So this is the end of the poetry written on the roof. We'll meet soon for the next chapter of the poetry. Thank you very much.